What is going on everyone? It has been a while since I have posted any videos. I am back. Hopefully I stay consistent and let's get right into this. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about picture profiles, specifically what picture profile I use, why I use it, and why I think you might want to use it too. Okay, so we don't waste any time and so that you don't have to watch the whole video, I'll just come right out and tell you what it is. Sony S-Log2 with the S gamut 3 dot C-I-N-E or sign. Take both of those, turn the saturation up to 20, and that's it. That is the picture profile I use for 99% of the things I shoot. All right, so before I go too far out of this, let me stop and say that this picture profile works great for me and my needs, but it requires a decent amount of color grading. You may not like color grading, you might not be able to color grade, or you might just not have the time to color grade. What I'm trying to say is that this might not be for you, even though it is the best picture profile for the camera. And with that said, let's just go right in. First things first, I'm gonna be using my blog as reference for this. If you wanna go there, blog.mytechliving.com. I did a full blog post about this exact profile if you wanna learn more. So scrolling down to where I say S-Log2 versus S-Log3, it brings me to a great starting point. When I first got this camera, I was confused as to what the best picture profile to use. All I knew was S-Log2 and S-Log3 were these amazing things that would allow you to capture so much dynamic range out of just your normal thousand dollar camera. But I had no idea what it actually meant. So of course I went online and did a bunch of searching and and I came across so much misinformation about what was best, S-Log2 or S-Log3. And I could never find any definitive answer as to which one was which, what was better, what was worse. But I'm the type of person that doesn't take no for an answer and I don't like just succumbing to people's opinion and not knowing what is true and what is false. So of course I continued searching and I finally came to an answer and I was happy with that answer. So let's just start with talking about S-Log in general. What is S-Log? S-Log is a gamma curve that allows you to hold more data in a standard codec by decreasing the contrast of the image, the saturation of the image, and compressing it into a standard codec. When you look at S-Log2 versus S-Log3, they're slightly different technologies based off of different gamma curves for different purposes. S-Log3 specifically is actually based off of a gamma curve called the Sinian Gamma Curve that was developed in the 80s and was used for digitizing film. Film normally has a much higher dynamic range than what most digital sensors can capture. So the Sinian Gamma Curve and S-Log3 were developed and built to have upwards of, I think it's 15 and a half to 16 stops of dynamic range. When you pair that with an 8-bit codec, you're gonna have a lot of compression. So because of that compression, S-Log3 actually won't be the best gamma curve for you, especially with an 8-bit camera. Now, if you have a camera, like some of the newer cinema cameras that are coming out that are able to capture 15, 16 stops of dynamic range and are using either a 10-bit 444 or a 10-bit 4444 codec or even RAW, then S-Log3 may be a great option for you. But for a camera like this that's 8-bit and 422 external or 420 internal recording, S-Log3 I would steer clear of it. You're gonna have too much compression. And I'll show you an example of that in a couple minutes. Now let's talk about S-Log2. S-Log2 may actually be older than S-Log3, but it was developed specifically for Sony's image sensors. What I mean by that is S-Log2 was developed, the gamma curve was developed with the dynamic range that a standard digital sensor can capture in mind. So looking at this picture below, we have Sony a6300 and Sony a7S III. Both of these in perfect conditions are rated at around 14 stops of dynamic range. But using both of these, we're looking at 11 or 10 and 11 stops of dynamic range respectively for each camera. Now, if you took that 10 or 11 stops of dynamic range and you saved it in a codec that could save 16 stops of dynamic range, there's gonna be a lot of compression there in the sense of there's a lot of wasted space on either end of that codec. Now, if we take S-Log2 and we do the exact same thing and save it in that codec that's only compressing it to 14 to 14 and a half stops of dynamic range, we have a lot less on either end of it which means the dynamic range we are able to capture is gonna be spread out more along the entire codec. 
Now that's a very generalized way of explaining it, but I think it does a decent enough job. So now that you understand S log, S log two and S log three, let's look at the color spaces. This is gonna define what colors your camera is able to capture and record. This is somewhat a two part thing. So the first part is gonna be the actual colors that your camera is capturing. And with this, we can look at this quick chart. This is all the colors that we can physically see with our eyes. And then inside of these boxes represents what's being captured by the image sensor and recorded. So if we look at this, S gamut three is gonna be the largest one. You can see compared to the actual colors we can see, that's the largest. So it's capturing the most color. Next one is gonna be this ITU R BT 2020. So if you look at the S gamut 3 Cine and the ITU R BT 2020, they're similar size, just in different areas. Overall, the S Gamut 3 Cine is probably a little bit bigger than it, but not by much. And then again, we keep going down the DCI-P3, most MacBooks, that's what it's able to capture. Then ITU RBT 709, that's primarily what most TVs are gonna display. The big thing here is gonna be how many colors do you wanna capture? If you want the most colors possible, then S Gamut 3 is obviously gonna be the best case scenario. S Gamut 3 is gonna be a close second, and then again, ITU RBT 2020. Otherwise, if you want something that's good enough that you won't be able to really tell the difference of and you're just looking at something straight out of the camera, the ITU R BT 709 or Rec 709 is probably gonna be the best case scenario. It's gonna be the easiest to work with. These other two, the S Gamut 3 and S Gamut 3 Cine are both gonna require some sort of color grading. But even though we're able to capture all of these colors, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. That first number, that 8-bit or 10-bit or 12-bit when we talk about what the camera is able to capture, you're gonna come into play here. That eight bit portion specifies how many bits are dedicated to each color. Eight bit color is the equivalent of 256 shades. Now that doesn't really sound like a lot, but when you take red, green, and blue and you mix it all together, that's 256 times 256 times 256, which means the equivalent of 16,777 and 216 colors in total. So in an eight bit codec, it's able to store 16.7 million different colors. And that sounds like a lot, but if you think about it, your eyes can see a whole lot more than that. And when we consider a 10-bit codec being able to record billions of colors, it's a big difference. So I'm sure you've heard of color banding. That's gonna be the big problem you run into with an 8-bit codec, is when you start color grading it, when you start stretching the image and you start actually modifying the colors, you're gonna start ending up with color banding. So what I found to be best was actually limiting the colors, not going with S Gamut or S Gamut 3. Because realistically with what I'm doing, I don't need that many colors. So let me summarize this for you. S Log 2 is the better of the two picture profiles. It's able to capture around 14 to 14 and a half stops of dynamic range. And while your image sensor is only able to capture 11 to 12 stops of dynamic range, there's gonna be a lot less compression with S Log 2 than S Log 3. In terms of the color gamut, even though S Gamut and S Gamut 3 are able to capture and maintain a lot more color than some of these other color gamuts, it's not necessarily a good thing because the 8-bit codec is not actually able to record that many colors in the codec. So limiting yourself to Rec. 709 or S Gamut 3.Cine if you want more colors are going to end up being your better bet. So let's go ahead and take a look at some actual test footage. All right, so let's take a look at a couple clips here. This first shot, I have two clips of the same thing overlaid. The top being S-Log3 and the bottom being S-Log2. This is so that we can take a look at how flat each image is. Both of these were shot at ISO 800, which is the lowest for their respective picture profile, which is S-Log2 and S-Log3. And I believe I shot both of them at f5.6 to make sure it was as sharp as I could get it. So as you can see, the top image being S-Log3 is much flatter, uh, not nearly as contrasty as S-Log2. And that, that's one of the benefits of S-Log2. Straight out of the camera, it's gonna have a little bit more contrast. Now, my picture profile, now my S-Log2 picture profile, I also modified it to have more saturation. So straight out of the camera, it's gonna be much easier to deal with than the S-Log3 default picture profile, which is extremely flat and nearly no contrast at all. But now let's take a look at the same picture when we grade both the top and bottom clip. 
You can see we can get them both very close to one another, but there are some subtle differences between the two, mainly being how much we're going to have to uncompress that S-Log3 picture. Now, in this scenario, you really won't be able to tell much of a difference between these, primarily because this entire picture is predominantly dark. There is a little bit of light in the background coming through on the trees and the leaves, but overall it isn't that much. So let's go ahead and look at something that's got a little bit more dynamic range between the darks and the lights. Alright, so here we have an image that has that same tree in the foreground, a little bit more light on the background as the sun started to go down, and then it also has the sky, which is extremely bright compared to everything else. So overall this has a much more dramatic dynamic range in there than the previous clip. Now one thing to note when you look at this, comparing S-Log2 on the left and S-Log3 on the right is the brightness of each one. Each one is overexposed by 1.7 stops, which is the recommended exposure for S-Log2 and S-Log3, specifically so that you are able to capture and maintain more detail in the shadows and the dark areas. Now one thing I did make sure of was I checked the zebras to make sure the sky was not blown out at all. So both of these clips are in proper exposure for their respective picture profile. Now one other thing I added here was I included the parade graphs for each one so that we could actually see the compression with each clip. So that we can actually see the compression with each clip with a graphical representation of that compression. So we can see the flatness here in terms of the dark and light areas, how little contrast there is with the S-Log3, how there is more contrast and more color overall with this S-Log2 picture profile. But now when we color grade them again and see how they look, we can see a lot more difference in the S-Log3 this time around, specifically once we start decompressing this image and stretching it. We'll start to see a lot of issues coming out in the highlights and even in the lowlights as we stretch it more and more. And the last thing I'm actually going to show is three different picture profiles lined up. This is going to be my S-Log2 picture profile, the standard S-Log3 picture profile, and then the last one is going to be a Cine2 picture profile using Pro Color. Alright, so taking a look at all three of these picture profiles straight out of the camera, you'll notice right away that the Cine2 picture profile has much more contrast than the other two. One other thing to note is dealing with the Cine2 picture profile, I struggled to get everything in exposure, specifically in what you'll see in a second. By spinning the ND filter, I was able to either get the sky in proper exposure or the trees, but not both at the same time. Whereas with both S-Log3 and S-Log2, I was able to get both of them in proper exposure. All right, and that's where I'm going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you learned something, and I hope I was able to help. If you did like it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button. If you didn't, well, I really don't know why the hell you're still watching. But I guess, see you in the next one. Later.